Soul Greenhouse from East Tennessee. I'm not at the greenhouse, but we are headed somewhere really fun today. Those of you who hadn't been up here uh, in, to, the, to the loop, what we call the loop, Cage Cove, it's an 11 mile loop in the mountains. It's the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Of course, it's free to get up and to go, like all national parks, but it does cost a little bit of money if you want to park over 15 minutes. So you can get out and walk and, and, and venture around and explore and do stuff like that, picnic, but uh, it does cost $5 for a day parking pass and things like that. But where we're at right now, for those of you that may or may not know, we live in, in down past Maribel in Tennessee. So for us, it's real close for us to come up here the way that we do it is we come up through Maribel and we go through this section of road right here, which some people can mistake for the loop sometimes. It's actually not. Uh, this is Highway 321, and this is called Hatcher's Cut. It's basically, if you can see all the rock formations over here on the, on the right side, uh, they've had to cut this stretch of the road out basically of, of the mountain. And I don't know if some guy named Hatcher had the idea to do it, but, but the, the locals around here call it Hatcher's Cut. Uh, it's about a six mile stretch through here and it opens up, basically this is the, the, the way to go to Townsend, uh, which is where the loop actually is. It's in Townsend. So this is just a cut through to get to that. There's another way to get to it uh, if you're coming from Gatlinburg cut across I, I think that might be 441 but I'm not 100% certain on that but you can cut across through Gatlinburg the back side of Gatlinburg and come down and we'll show you where it comes out it's called the Y uh, and you'll, we'll explain that to you too whenever we get up here but, but it's absolutely worth the drive to do it it's, it's, it's an incredibly beautiful place especially this time of year in the fall but it's really neat, but uh, as you can see here, we're coming out of the cut and we're going to be entering into Townsend. Townsend's a small little town, uh, about four or five hundred people actually live inside the city of Townsend, but it's just a small little town in between, basically in between North Carolina and Maribel. It's just, it's actually a really beautiful place. And yes, it is. I love right it. There. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome place. Love, awesome love, place love to it. vacation. It's, for those of you that are familiar with like Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg, it's not that. Um, no. But it's got a lot of, several covered bridges in the community and, and a lot of walking paths. And, uh, you know, there's some nice neighborhoods up here, but it's just, as you can see, it's it's sparse. It's not very populated. Uh, it's they call it the peaceful side of the Smokies because that's kind of a knockoff for like Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. It's not super peaceful. No, not anymore. No, not anymore. So they, they call this the peaceful side of the Smokies. So this is kind of where we're at. So we'll show you the why up here in a few minutes, but uh, and, and kind of give you an idea of what what that looks like things like that. So, all right. Well, that place right there is called the Heritage Center, which is really neat because it's got a lot of different relics and things from the community here, and they kind of put it all together to make a, like a museum. It's really, really, really interesting. We actually stayed straight at the red light that we showed you right back there, and that changes from Highway 321 to Highway 73, which will take you directly up to what we call the Y, which is coming up right up through here. And there's, as you can see over here to the left here, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, campgrounds and, and things like that. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful to stay at. Uh, it's really just a really super peaceful place. Rivers right here too, as you can probably see. Here's the actual entrance to the Smoky Mountain National Park. People also think that this is part of the loop. It's not. Uh, we're getting up to the Y to where you have to turn right or left. 
As you see, here's the Y. It's a real popular swimming place. Swimming hole. Swimming hole. Uh -huh. It's a big hole. It's neat. I like going. But people can park right here and get to pay because you're in the park. But here's the Y. This is the Y. If you look at the sign right here, you can see where you can go left to go to Gatlinburg. This way to Cage Cove, there's a, some turkeys. Oh, turkeys. But this right here will take you to Cage Cove Loop. And that's where we're headed. And, and there's a picnic we're area. Ready. We're gonna have some lunch. We bought some charcoal this morning and brought some hamburger buns and some hamburger patties. So we're gonna we're gonna grill out a little bit up here. Another six miles of this right here going up the mountain. And it's not a hard drive at all. It's it's very easy, very peaceful. There's several pull-offs here off to the sides. So if you want to pull off and take some pictures, and some of the places like right here wouldn't be a good idea, but you can get down into the river right here, which is perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not against the law. Uh, you can do that. I would pick your places wisely. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be able to see some wildlife. It's not unusual to see you know, quite a few deer up here, bear. Turkey. <laughs> we just entered Kate's Cove. Still not the loop. Not the loop. That's where we will be having lunch. We gotta find somewhere to buy a park ticket. Yeah. Ooh, it's cool up here. Do this. I've no, this is the first. Years and been coming here a long, long time, and they just started this a couple of years ago. And, yeah. and it's not a bad thing. It helps with keeping the park maintenance up and, you know, making it really nice, help to pay the roads and things like that. This is the entrance to the actual loop itself. There's a lot of history up here. This used to be public property, and when the government whatever that was, I, I don't know the time frames or whatever, decided they wanted to make this into a national park. They came in and they they purchased the land from the homeowners. And one of the conditions was, there's a turkey down there or something, that they, the homeowners could stay here until they, you know, they, they die. Um, and so they did. And I think the last person living up in the cove was mid 90s uh, was the last time that a person lived up here huh. and you can still see a lot of the old home fronts and the, where, where the, a lot of the houses used to be and things like that and, and there are graveyards up here uh, there's a couple of churches up here because like I said it was a community and there is I didn't realize it until Casey told me about it a little while back but one of my my, I think it was a great grandfather. A great great grandfather, maybe, or something. Yeah, a great great one. actually buried up here. So we're going to try to find that today. Too. Yeah, because really I do genealogy, and as I was doing it, I saw on one of the gravestones and digging it said Cade's Cove. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. So we're going to go up here and try to find it. Uh, up here, about halfway through, they put some bathrooms in and things like that, and they have the whole. There's some old mills and some old barns and stuff from back whenever this was an active community. And we'll show you some of that stuff too. It's really cool too. So this right here, this little cutoff right here to the left is called Sparks Lane. If you, say you got in here, and, and this is a one-way thing. Say you got in here and all of a sudden, oh no, I, I need to you know, have an emergency, run to the bathroom, medical emergency, something of that nature. You can cut across there and it'll cut you all the way across to the other side and get out a little quicker. This is a cabin back into here that you can go hike to and see. All right, we've made it to the Methodist Church, so we're gonna go up here and see if we can find his, I wanna say, find his ancestor in the graveyard. What is the name of this church, honey? 
This is the Cades Cove Methodist Church. And this is a real deal, too. There's nothing been changed on it. But it's the foundation. Sitting on stones. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Huh. Interesting. Oh, wow. Awesome. It's cool in here. This is amazing. Look at the piano. I wonder if it works. Huh. sweet the sound that saved a I love old graveyards. I just think they're so neat in the history. Like me, Sparks there. I, I mean, these are obviously the people that lived up here. But now so your family must have lived up here. Somebody, yeah. Blind, but now I see. These are two little babies died the same day when they were born. That is so cool. What's it say on it? G Geo? W. Seaton died September 30th, 1921. Age about 75 years. So just the one Seaton there? I guess. Here's the Missionary Baptist Church. Have you been in that one? Yeah. Do you want to? If you want to. If there's room for us to park. We're going to go in here because I've never been in this one, I don't think. I see how it's like rocks. You what? It's been, that foundation's been replaced? I see how these rocks over here, but this side over here has been replaced. Oh. At some point. This is massive. Massive trees. Where the stove was. Yeah. Right in the center, keep everybody warm. Good idea. <laughs> right there by the stove. You probably had to keep the stove burning though. That's true. Bibles. Get up here and we'll preach a little bit. Choir loft. Up here, you guys sing. Ooh, that's cold. You sit up here by these windows, you freeze. More sparks. You feel you go to the bathroom? Yeah. Can you really? Sure, it's an outhouse. Are you joking? No, go to the bathroom. You go first. <laughs> is it for real? A real one? This is where. It, church had to go to the bathroom. Oh, you're, you're being mean. I really need to go to the bathroom. Well, that's what this is. It's got a lock on it. It's because I don't want nobody to use it. I mean, I need to. I ain't going in that oh. one. <laughs> I'll wait, dear. If I need to go bad enough, I'll use a tree. There's a lot out here. Neat. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That is cool. 
There's the bale up there. Look at all those rocks for the foundation. As people decide to get out of their cars to walk up and get a better picture of the bear. No. Don't do that. Yeah. That's frowned upon. They're not as friendly as the deer. We were up here one year and everybody saw a bear. And you can always kind of tell when you're on the loop because you'll start seeing massive amounts of brake lights and then everybody's wanting to stop and take a picture of the bear. We were up here one year and there was a guy that decided he would get out to go see the bear. And I was about 20 cars back, so I could see the guy, I could see the bear, it was a fairly decent sized bear, 150 pounds, whatever. This guy creeps up to this bear and he startles the bear and he the bear turns around and doesn't stand up on his hind legs, but jumps <laughs> like that and lets out this blood curling guttural roar that shook the mountains, I'm telling you. <laughs> and this guy, I'm pretty sure he wet his pants because he, he made it about 50 yards in a second and a half to get back to his car. It was glorious. <laughs> because that's not something you do. And there's some deer walking down here. I see them walking across. Oh yeah. So the deer are not, they're not very skittish. They're used to people. They won't come up to you and let you pet them or nothing, but, but they're not like your deer that you see in your backyard if you live in the woods or whatever. They they're, got it made up here. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they, nobody hunts up here. There's your deer, folks. That's what I was telling you, they don't, they don't care. They're just doing their thing. Three little does. Ah, that one over there, he might, that's a buck out here on the, to the left. Yeah, that's a little buck. So, so I'll tell y'all folks, those of you that like to hike. To a pretty waterfall. It is, it's a, about, about a mile, about a mile and a half hike back into what's called Abrams Falls. It's not an easy hike. It's a rocky. It's mediocre. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if, it's, if it's wet at all, it's pretty, it can be pretty difficult. Wear just, some good hiking shoes. Right. Just because Support your ankles. it's rocky <laughs> and it's slick. But I'll tell you what, when you get back there, it's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It's back in there. The Abrams Falls trailhead. All right. So here's the midway point. They've got restrooms here, and there's some cabins over here, really neat. There's an old grist mill where they used to grind corn to make corn meal. Really cool. A couple other, a couple other cabins and stuff over here, barns and such. But I think we're going to stop and take a restroom break. So this is like the little visitor area right here. Down here is where it's really cool. Cause this used to be the grist mill. And you can see where they used the water to turn the, the big grinding stones to make cornmeal. Hot dog on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so put coal on it. 
and get the coal really hot and bring all the sulfurous compounds off of it. And then it'll stop smoking. It also brings a lot hotter. And it becomes coated. What's he doing? Get the hot shake and pour the meat. What are you doing? I know that's how we can eat our old silver on that. So they're channeling this water from the mountains, the river, all the way down to the actual meal, which we'll go into in a few minutes. But that's what's turning the water wheel to turn the grist wheel, which is really cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's neat. Gorgeous. If you look, they the, the creek naturally goes through here, but they dammed this up to make it higher than what the actual creek is. Because if you look, you can see the water line is higher than the road, and it's because they dammed this up. This is called a cantilever barn. Tell that because of the way that it is. That's my, <laughs> that's my nod to Derek Vice Garage, hashtag Vice Garage. <laughs> but this is a common barn in the Smokies Mountains. It was the cantilever. Wood pile. That's got old tools in here. Yeah, plows and different things. Yeah. There's a yoke. I don't know if that's a yoke or not. That's some type of. I don't know what that would be for. Look how they made the hinges for this door. Look at that. Hmm. There's the pretty river. I love that sound. Oh, that's beautiful. Duckboard wagon. I don't guess that they're actually grinding today because the water wheel's not turning. But typically, if the water wheel's turning, they're grinding corn. Can we come in? Knock, knock. Hello? Really cool. Rebecca Cable was better known as Aunt Becky to the Cates Cove. She bought this house in 1887. Never married. A store out of it for eight years. They were without a doubt familiar with the cables. She owned 600 acres. There she is. Look at this is where people live. Come here and look. This is where they cook and now they cook cool. warm. Notice how the ceilings are seven feet, maybe. Less to heat. Yeah. Windows are small, less heat transfer. Yeah. She had a pretty view though. Everything she? was purpose built. Look at the floors. Those two little doors there. Is that doors? Yeah, it's probably a pass through maybe to the other room. Maybe. Oh, there might have been a stairwell right here. There was one point. Look at that fireplace. Hand laid. 
obviously, but look at that mortar. Mm -hmm. Stack stone from around the property. Pretty cool, man. Awesome. Used to live there. That's his place. Well, he picked a pretty spot. Cause look at his view. Yeah, not bad. This is the world famous cantilever bar. Yeah, we walked out there one time. Yeah, that's the world famous one that you'll see everywhere. Made it to the picnic area. Hopefully, we can find a spot so we can yeah. grill some burgers. I found a spot. We found an amazing spot. He's going back to get the food, and we've got a little grill, and we're right by the river. I am going to walk down to the creek while he gets the fire going. And in a little while, I'm going to take my shoes and socks off and I'm going to walk in here because I love doing that. Even though it's in the 50s. I think it's like 54 right now. <laughs> so pretty. So, I'm going to tell y'all, one of the best things about Cage Cove is once you're done going around the loop or whatever, you can do it before if you want to. It's the actual fact that you can, they've got this campground here. It's not a campground, it's a picnic area that you can come and go to and, and, and grill out and everything like that. And so we have decided after we got done, we're having some burgers. <laughs> so we're just waiting on the charcoal to ash over. And while we're doing that, this is our view. It's a terrible view. It's awful. It's just awful. <laughs> we know New York. We went to Niagara Falls and we went all the way to Hunnicutt, New York, all the way over to New York. We kind of went to Back Row and Hunnicutt. And it was so mountainous there oh, and yeah. beautiful. I was shocked. I took a trip to the river. It was cold. It felt good though. We're heading out of the picnic tables area and we had lunch. It was delicious. I think our trip is about over. Yeah, we thought we'd show you all the, there's a campground back here, a pavilion area that's really nice too. I think there's a ranger station here as well. So if you need information, help, whatever. So you can rent this little area right here. You can come sit down and eat. This is the ranger station. And the campground is straight ahead. We're not obviously gonna go into there, but that's that's where the campground is in there. You can get firewood, there's vending machines here, you can get ice here. Uh, hey, you gotta remember this is a campground, so, or this section of it is. And this is where you're allowed to camp. You're not necessarily allowed to camp inside the loop area, the Cades Cove loop area, but you can camp up here. We should do that sometime. Be fun. <laughs> we don't have a camper. We'll have to borrow one. This is Cades Cove. This is Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Of course, Great Smoky Mountain National Park is a massive, massive area. But this right here is when people say they're coming to their Smoky Mountains. This is what people come to. The Cades Cove, what they call the loop. So that's been our adventures for today, guys. So glad y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Glad y'all came along with us. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.